All right, Admin Mastermind Group and Teach Better Family. Well, welcome again for our Mastermind Recap. And as you can see, I have a special and wonderful guest here, Miss Allison Apsey, who joined the conversation and provided so much wisdom and value. And I was so excited to see you on screen, Allison. Oh, it's so good to see you always. I hope to see you in person soon, but oh. what a way to start the day. I'd love this. Yes, day. I know you, you had said it perfectly. It was like a, a jolt of energy and, and yeah. it's so true. And we had several folks on spring break and I know some people emailed a message that they wish they were there with us this morning. So that's hopefully what this recap is for is for those who couldn't join us to be able to get some of the resources and information from our conversation. As always, Allison, we had kind of a fun way to start things off and kick it off with some emoji assessment. And we had some fun conversation about all the really unique ways people communicated how they were feeling this point in the year. Yeah, that was super fun to have that emoji check in. I love Dr. Martinez. He had a soccer ball and a goal. And I don't know if it was like he was missing the goal, but it wasn't. He was nope. like in his third principalship and had learned so much in his first two and was putting into practice all those things that he had learned and just feeling like, oh my gosh, it's coming together now. So that was exciting to hear. Yes, there was some great conversation from that and just kind of, yeah. And, you know, this is probably a perfect segue. You had talked about just this time of year, you know, how we can get an assessment of our staff, of our campus. And you shared this huge and valuable resource, um, which is a core values activity. And I would love for you, Allison, to share about like kind of that idea of getting the values from your staff, but then also like what you did with uh, your weekly check-ins. Cause I think oh, both yeah. those things um, correlate to kind of what we started <laughs> with this meeting with the emoji challenge. You know, we often think about team building as in like the human knot or like passing a hula hoop around or just different kind of camp games and activities. But I found that Brene Brown's core values activity was like the most probably meaningful team building activity that we ever did as a staff. And I was rereading um, Dare to Lead. I think it was like the summer before we came back from COVID. And she, I was listening to the part where she was talking about your two core values. And I thought, gosh, I don't know what my two core values are. So I did the exercise where you just look at a list of core values and Brene Brown offers one on her website. And there's 100 core values. And you just kind of start by identifying the ones that speak to you and then whittling it down to your top 10, whittle it down to your top five, and then your top two, which is so difficult and tricky. But my two top core values, um, I, I identified as integrity and making a difference. And it was interesting because I was thinking about my staff and I thought, you know, they need to know this about me because these core values motivate so much of my behavior. Um, you know, I was I was all in as a principal, but in addition, I was writing books, I was blogging, I was traveling and speaking. And I know at times they're like, Allison, like, aren't we enough? Like, you know, can't you just like settle in here? And I, I don't think I think my work actually was improved because of all of the other things I was doing. And I don't think they meant it that way. They just were maybe didn't understand or were confused. But once I explained, like, I have this core value of making a difference and I want that to come to life here. But then there's also like these other avenues that I explore that help me fulfill that mission and be the best leader I can be. So then that translated into helping them do the same activity. And they worked alongside, they worked individually, but alongside each other. And I just bought these little canvases from the dollar store and paint pens. And I gave them the list. We went through the activity. Um, I shared a link to um, the activity can be found on uh, oh, no, I think it is on my blog post, but um, or my blog or somewhere in my resources. Um, but they they identified what their core values were. So it was interesting. Just a real quick story about that. Um, and then we'll we'll talk about the weekly check in. Um, but when I looked at that list of core values that Brene Brown provides on her website, there is one core value that I got a little judgy about in my mind as I was looking at them. And it was the core value of beauty. I thought, hmm. who who would have a core value of beauty as one of their two core values? 
that was a very unfair thing and judgy thing for me to think, but I'm just being honest. And then when we did the activity with my staff, there was one of my teachers who had a core value. One of her two core values she chose was beauty. And it was interesting because this is a teacher who, like if I put up a bulletin board in the hallway, like I cringed when she walked by it because I know I knew she was going to find like something crooked, something out of place. Like she just had this eye for seeing things in a way that I did not see them. And I knew her enough that I, I just knew that like she had this, I looked at it as a gift, but others could look at it as in criticism mm -hmm. or judgment, or it could be something that really hurt relationships. Mm -hmm. But as soon as we collectively recognize that this is a unique core value to her, this is an asset to our school. This is a lens that she looks at the world with that none of us look at the world with. All of a sudden we embraced that as a strength rather than looking at it as a source of judgment and criticism. And you, wouldn't you know it, she began a, a mission of beautifying the school, like capitalizing. She put these beautiful planters in front of our school and behind our school and um, like would come at night and water them, change them out for the seasons. And then other teachers were asking her like, can you come into my room and take a look at this space for me and help me redesign it and rethink it? And, and, that's just a small example of the power of really knowing each other, what our core values are and what drives our behavior. Yeah, I think that also goes into strengths too, right? I think that lens of understanding that they have something magnificent to offer. And instead of viewing it as a criticism, having that positive intent of saying like, no, they're there to improve it. <laughs> like they want it to be better. And I love the idea of, of viewing that, but I think it did need to be communicated. I think yeah. that coming from her in that um, as a core value, I think that's powerful because then it lets people know like this is important to me and it is a strength. And then that changes the perspective for everyone involved. Yes, yes. And she got like accolades and thanked all the time rather than, um, you know, fearing her coming out with her staple remover and stapler to fix <laughs> <laughs> our, our messy bulletin boards. But it's well, interesting too, like Joshua, that came up, right? Like the, the importance of communication, especially this time of the year mm -hmm. and just being consistent and clear as a leader with communication as we go into this like roller coaster, hang on tight, the yeah. end of the year is in sight. Well, yeah. And so Allison, the end of the year, you know, we talked about spring is sprung. Like there's a lot to do. We're already looking forward to next year. Uh, some of the administrators were talking through just their schedule of having to do tasks to end this current year, but then also the tasks to get prepared for next year. And so it's almost like two jobs and two, two mind frames that they constantly have to be in. But you did something too, I think is so important and it's something that you share that, you know, we do with students all the time, which is like classroom check-ins. <laughs> but as a leader, we don't really do that with our staff. And so um, I think everyone that's watching and participate can agree that that's just as important, right? We need to understand what's going on in the world of our staff members. So would you just share kind of what your weekly staff check-ins look like and why you started that process? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think I started it in 2019 and it wasn't my idea. It was one of my teachers. We we're, mm -hmm. were having a, a like an IEP or something about a student and talking about the daily check-ins that the teacher does with the student. And the teacher said, it would be really nice for teachers to have check-ins. And I'm like, oh my gosh, that is a brilliant idea. So then I went to the staff and said, hey, this idea came up and I'd like to explore it. What do you guys think? And they said, um, they kept it real with me. They're like, Allison, don't use any of your fancy tech tools and please keep it simple, like one question. So I, I drafted what it would look like and sent it out to them and said, hey, you know, what feedback do you have? And I'm sure I made some adjustments based on their feedback. But it ended up being Monday morning. Um, I would schedule it to go out, hopefully before I left on Friday. So I didn't even have to think about it. Um, and it was just one question, Google form. How are you feeling about the week ahead? And this is also in my blog. Um, but they answered, I'm feeling great, ready to roll. Or I have a lot to do, but I'm going to be OK. Or um, I need some TLC. Please see me when you get a chance. Or help me ASAP. And, um, and then there was an option to like other, they could fill in the blank. Um, so then 
as everyone knows, Google Forms goes into spreadsheets. So I would um, send that out and then beginning at, uh, so it would go out maybe 7.30 in the morning and beginning at um, maybe 9 a.m., I would pull it up and I'd take a look and see what the responses were. The vast majority of responses came right away because they knew I would be checking it right away. And then I, I was I shared with them my process. So on that spreadsheet, if they marked, I could use some TLC, like I need to go see them sometime within, over the course of the day, I marked it as yellow. If they marked help me or I need something ASAP, I marked it as red. And then my goal for myself was to change those yellows and reds to greens by the end of the day, because I had already followed up that changing it to a green was an indication to me that I'd already followed up. And inevitably, you know, once in a while, I would have a yellow or a red that at the end of the day, I wasn't able to get to that staff member, or, I, you know, I went there and they weren't available or whatever the case was. So I would shoot them a text, I would go see if they were there at the end of the day. And then if they weren't, I'd shoot them a text and say, Hey, I saw you respond to this on the check in. Do you, do you want a phone call right now? Like, what can I do to, to best help you? And sometimes they would want a phone call. And sometimes they would say, hey, let's just touch base in the morning. I'll come see you first thing when I get there. And perfect. So just if we're going to ask a question like that and do a check-in, we have yeah. to have a system for responding. And I had colleagues who were like, Allison, I don't have time on Mondays to do that. And it doesn't take that much time. And it's not a substitute for going around and visiting with teachers and seeing face to face, it's like this safety net. So we can make sure if we weren't able to see a teacher or if somebody wasn't comfortable saying something to us when we visited the classroom, or there's those staff members who would come in for recess duty. They would often respond to me on the check-in because I'm busy doing recess duty alongside them and we don't have a lot of time together. Mm -hmm. Bus drivers that I don't get to see very often, they had access to the check-in. So it was crucial. And then over COVID, um, it was really easy to shift it to an at-home check-in. The yep. question changed because we were talking about like, are you healthy? Do you need anything? And then we used that same concept with our families when we were, um, you know, distance learning. So mm -hmm. um, that was a nice bonus to be able to just shift that practice that we already had in place. Yeah. And plus, I mean, the front office, as you know, Allison is just an insane just environment. And so there are so many times that you don't, have a specific time where you're alone, where people can come in and share and be vulnerable because they don't want their business out into the world, right? They don't want people listening and hearing in what with potentially something crucial going on in their personal life. And so, you know, you've given them a safe space to be able to share with you and not have to find this one in a lifetime opportunity to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation right. <laughs> when, when just a lot of times chaos is going on in the front office. So um, love the blog posts and what was shared. So for those on that are watching on YouTube, it's on the screen there. Um, or you can just go to allisonapsey.com and, you know, go over to the blog section. Um, probably very simple to okay. find, but this is the, the link here for you. Um, Allison, you know, we're just kind of wrapping up our conversation, but for the last kind of end of the conversation today at the admin mastermind, we had talked about just the importance of collaboration, but specifically to kind of help morale but then also kind of bring some fun onto the campus. So was there anything that was highlighted from the group that you would just want to share out um, as far as like maybe kind of building that up before the end of the school year? Yeah, um, just a couple of things. When we ask teachers, you know, what do you need from your leaders? Um, they say they want visibility. They want leaders to be all in and enjoying the work. They want to know that they're seen and valued as individuals. Those are the things that are really important to them, but also it's important to, to have some opportunities for fun. And there were a lot of ideas that were shared. In fact, Ray went on to chat GPT and said, give me 50 easy to implement ideas for boosting staff <laughs> morale. And there they are, all right there. One thing that I, I would like to encourage anybody who's listening is that um, it's the advice that Beth Huff and Shelly Burgess give in Lead Like mm -hmm. a Pirate and that people are much less likely to tear down systems that they help build. Yeah. And if they're involved in those activities to boost staff morale, like get that list of 50 from chat GPT and let teacher teams select. Oh, there we go. Lead like a pirate. Good job. Let the <laughs> teacher team select one to that they'd like to lead 
in, over the course of the end of the year, create a simple calendar and let it doesn't all it can't all rest on our shoulders because we as le as principals, I just wrote a blog post of I think it's called principals. It's not you. It's the job. It's yeah. too much. We have to have shared leadership. And this is one way, um, you know, I had principals coming to me like, Elson, I can't continue buying candy and buying all these treats. Like, I don't feel like staff really likes it. I don't feel like it's worth working to boost morale and I can't simply afford it. Yeah. And the, the reality is you don't have to, and, and you shouldn't like let everybody help take the lead with fun activities to end the school year with. Yeah, for sure. I think that's a great way to end our conversation today. For those who are watching, if you're not already connected with the Teach Better team, we are meeting every Tuesday morning, 9 a.m. Eastern time, and it is free. <laughs> so you're getting yeah. that support and the community um, at no cost. So uh, teachbetter.com slash masterminds. You sign up there, you get the Zoom link, and then you get also just the wonderful collaboration of so many leaders over the United States and Canada, because we got some folks up there too. Um, so love our folks in Canada. And then also love our special guests that get to join us, like the wonderful Allison Apsey. So thank you um, so much I, for having me. <laughs> yes. It was so much fun to learn from you. And um, I just appreciate your time, not only in the mastermind, but then also for this recap. Thank you. Thank you.